Okay, so just a quick little video on setting up your clay renders or your final projects inside of ZBrush. You could, you know, just take this um, and set this to on a, it just a, like a basic material or like a matcap gray. Take some screenshots um, or snippets or export the documents and just compile a bunch of different views uh, as you've been doing for the rest of the class. But uh, if you wanted to take your, your renders a little bit um, nicer, then I'm going to go over that rendering process right now. Um, I'm going to use the Zebro Clayset SL7 material here. And if you forgot to download these materials, they are up in the class resources folder. That's uh, class resources, ZBrush resources, and other scripts. And then there's a materials folder. So go ahead and download those. Again, so that I'm using the SL7 here. And with that, um, if I expand my divider to here, and then I click on the render tab, and I just dock that over here. If I hit Shift R, that's a sh the hotkey to render. There's also like a BPR button somewhere in one of the UI settings that I don't have active right now. And when you do that, you'll see that A, the image gets a little bit clearer, and then B, we get some shadows. So when we're looking at the sculpts in uh, the real time, in real time, then you don't get those shadows. So uh, if I go in closer and I hit Shift R again, you'll see that a lot of the like artifacting or all, a lot of those like real time viewport things, like the transition between the hair and the head, uh, get cleaned up. Right, so I want to zoom out a little bit so you can see. Uh, let's set up this document a little bit better too. So I'm going to make this a flat background because I don't like the gradient. It makes it harder for me to get rid of it later if I needed to. Um, and then let's go and go to the draw menu. I'm going to change the angle of view down a little bit to say like 40. I think 50 is a little too wide angle for my tastes. And since this is uh, kind of a exaggerated feature character, I'm going to leave it slightly wide angle. Typically when I'm working though, I take this down to like say 30 or 35, or if not like 25 here. And if I hit Shift R again, you'll see that yes, we get shadows. Those shadows are going to be dictated by this light. And so here, um, I can reposition this light, for instance, Shift R, and that's going to put the cast shadow in that direction. Um, you could add additional lights here, like if I turn, double click on one of these light bulbs, you'll see that uh, that turns yellow, and I can reposition this like fill lights, maybe take the intensity up just a little bit. I can Shift R that. And um, that being that, actually, let's go to the basic material. It's a little easier to see. And I get a little bit more fill light here. So if I turn that light off, you see it's a, a much, much harsher shadow. So I do think that. Um, in this case, I just want one, and we'll keep it to the single overhead light like this. These shadows are too harsh for me, so I'll go to the BPR shadow options, and I'll take this angle up. So the higher the angle, the softer those shadows. So I'll do like angle of 30, shift R, it fuzzes out. So you, But the problem is, when I do that, there's a lot of um, banding inside of the shadows and I'm going to take the ray count up to say I don't know 64 64 we hit shift R again that gets higher quality here um, the angle if you go too high like say like 50 sometimes that's a little too diffuse so like for instance, I think I, I don't want um, the shadows under the eyebrows to be that soft. So usually I like to stay within the 30 to 35 range. 
but it really depends on what kind of look that you're going for. Maybe I'll take this a little bit higher, like say 35. Render that. I could increase the ray count to say, I don't know, 128. And then the blur, maybe I can uh, blur those shadows just a little bit more. So I'll double that. Okay, so I think that works out pretty well. The blur might be a little intense, so I can just take this down. I'll zoom out and reframe my composition here. So this would be like my front view. I can hit Shift R. Ooh. Okay, so you know what? Let's let's take this back down to two. We'll do back to thirty-five. I still want to see some of the eyeball. I think I lied. I think I want to take that angle up. I'm going to take that blur down just so it doesn't wash out further. Maybe it's just overall too strong, so I'll take that strength. Right, so the, the global strength. Okay. Do something like uh, 0.65. Okay, I think that's a reasonable amount here. Um, I did sculpt this pretty. He has some pretty deep set eyes, so that kind of makes sense. So we'll shift R this, let it go. I'll do documents, export this. We'll call it as um, friends view, or you know, I'll just do uh, render. The one I'll look to a different side. Shift R again. So once you figure out what your shadow settings are, I think that's pretty much all you really need. And just do some renders from different views and say one more. And then I will do a document exports. Oops. And so if we open up Photoshop, take this render in and then I can just click and drag the other two renders I'll hit enter to place them go ahead and rasterize these layers and I can com composite them however I need to To just magic wand it, and then you can set up your image templates uh, for the rest of your scene. But yeah, that's a pretty simple process. Hope that helps.